Hello, this is Gundam UK and this is a bit of a special video, this one. Um, I wanted to do an update to a video that I did many, many years ago, back in 2012. And that's how to build and paint a Gundam model. And I originally did it in sort of three parts. Um, so I thought I'm going to do one that's a lot more concise, a lot more precise, and hopefully a lot shorter. And I'm going to go through an entire HG build from start to end and hopefully give you as much information as possible in order for you to make your own. Now you've got to understand that this is just the way that I do things, so this is in fact kind of like a Gundam UK way of doing things, and um, I'm going to do it a lot more concisely uh, in future in my book, which is still currently in, uh, in process of being made. I just need to take uh, lots of pictures. Uh, but for now, uh, you've got this video. Um, if you are a Gunpla modeler or you're, you know, you've know, you been in it for a while and you want to share some of your tips about how to build and paint Gundam models, then please do comment below. Um, all, the, all the feedback and advice is much appreciated, especially for people who are perhaps starting out in the hobby. So um, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, so let's take a look at the kit that we're going to be building. Uh, it is a high-grade model. Uh, it is a gun cannon mobility slash uh, firepower test type from the Origin series. We've just opened it up here and are looking through the runners just to check everything is present. And here is the instruction manual. Uh, very simple, straightforward. Put this part to this part. Um, it's quite easy to follow. I don't think you really need any instructions on how to do that. There is some guides in here as to what paints you can use. Um, this is just like a general guide as to how you should mix your paints. But, you know, it's up to you how you do it. And uh, you'll see later on how we tackle the painting. So let's get on and uh, organise these runners in the box. So the first thing you're going to do is take all of the runners out of the box and you're going to take them out of the plastic packaging. And then it's a good idea to put them all in order back in the box and stack them upright so you can uh, quickly find where the runners are. All of the runners do have like a designated letter or number uh, attached to the sprue. Some kits come with uh, a bunch of stickers. Um, most of the time I don't use these. Um, it's not particularly a good idea to use them if you're painting your kit uh, because they can be a little bit thick and they don't look very good to be honest. Um, and if you want to add some detail yourself, you can do during the painting process or you can use water slide decals. And again, we'll show that a bit later on. A few tool essentials. You're gonna need uh, some flat edge nippers. Uh, hopefully quite sharp ones, uh, especially flat edge ones because they have to cut through the plastic quite cleanly. You need a good, very sharp hobby knife. Uh, you also need sandpaper. Um, I typically use 800 grit and this is just standard automotive waterproof sanding paper. Um, it's good to get various grits for various situations. I normally attach mine to uh, lollipop sticks in order to keep them on a flat edge. And how I do that is I just simply get some double sided tape, place it on either side of the lollipop stick, and then I cut the sandpaper to a nice long rectangle that's around two centimeters in height, and then wrap the sandpaper around it in order to make a nice flat edge. And I typically make maybe five, six, seven of these, just depends on uh, how big the kit is. And uh, you can kind of make them as you go along, so it's all good. So as you start assembling the kit, uh, what you want to do is cut away from the part um, as far away as possible, uh, leaving a little bit of a nub behind. And uh, it's a good idea to cut it from behind to the front, as I'm demonstrating here, just so you can see clearly where you are cutting. And uh, you leave a little bit of a nub behind, which will be cleared up in the next stage. Next, to clear up those nubs, uh, you get yourself a very sharp hobby knife and uh, very carefully slice away any remaining plastic where the nub was. After that, just get your sandpaper and very gently, and in one direction, uh, just gently sand away any remaining nub until you have a nice smooth surface. 
After that, you can get yourself a nice stiff brush like this uh, toothbrush and just brush over the whole thing to make sure you've got rid of any kind of plastic dust that's gathered in any of the details. So as you assemble the kit, you have to bear in mind that you're going to take it apart again later uh, in order to paint it. So what you want to do is make sure that anywhere where there's a tight fit, uh, you want to cut back the actual connecting pegs that go into each part. So what I normally do is, is uh, I trim off just a tiny amount of the peg and then fit the part and then check that I'm able to remove it quite easily uh, later on. Uh, if it becomes too loose, don't worry about it too much, you can always just glue it in place. So once you've finished assembling the kit, the next thing you want to do is to identify anywhere where there is a seam line that needs removing. So if we take a look at this kit, uh, you can see that here on the shoulders there's a bit of a seam line that needs dealing with. And there's also one here uh, either side of the head. So now we need to disassemble the kit and uh, identify the parts that need to be glued. So the next stage of the build is to remove any of those seam lines and uh, it's pretty straightforward. What you need to do is um, take the two parts apart where there is a seam line and get yourself some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. You can just use normal Tamiya Poly Cement or anything that's available in your country. Uh, I particularly favour Extra Thin because it tends to run into small spaces so it's a good idea to get hold of that. And all I'm going to do is just uh, be quite generous and uh, lay it down on along the edge of one of the surfaces. And then you take the two parts and squeeze them together until you get a small bead of glue coming through. If you've missed any bits, don't worry, you can just apply it on afterwards just to help it bond. And then you're going to get some clamps and clamp those two pieces together in order to form a nice strong bond. And I typically leave this for at least 24 hours to fully cure, just to make sure that the bond is nice and tight. What's also a good idea is to put some masking tape around the pegs where there are joints. Uh, this is just to make sure that there's no paint buildup along those joints uh, to make them stiff when you reassemble it. Uh, it's quite straightforward, you just get a tiny piece of masking tape and you wrap it around any pegs where there's a moving joint. So once the glue has set nicely on your piece where you're removing a seam line, the next thing you want to do is to get some very low grit sandpaper and I've got some uh, 240 grit here and just very carefully rub over uh, where the seam line is just to get rid of uh, any excess glue that's come out of that um, out of that seam line you don't have to go in quite so heavy uh, with the low grit sandpaper if the seam line can be removed just with some uh, some 800 grit or something like that uh, I'm just using 240 grit in this case uh, because the seam line is actually quite deep and leaves quite a deep crevice uh, when it's glued together if you've used quite a low grit sandpaper, uh, the next thing you want to do is to get a slightly higher grit sandpaper. I'm um, just using the 600 and then 800 grit. And keep working your way up uh, all the way along the edge of the seam line until you have a nice smooth surface. Uh, I like to finish off using uh, a bit of sanding sponge that's very high grit, something around 2000 to 3000 grit. Just gently rub over it, uh, especially if it's a curved surface, you want to make sure that the sandpaper you're using is not on a uh, on a flat edge. This is where um, sanding sponges can be very handy. If you still have a line left behind, you can always fill it in with a bit of Tamiya putty. Um, it's a good idea to put quite a lot on because it does shrink. Uh, this stuff comes in quite a handy tube and dries relatively quickly. So you just uh, slap it on, give it like an hour or so to fully cure and then you can sand it back again until you have a nice smooth surface. So once you've taken everything apart and dealt with any seam lines, uh, the next thing you want to do is to prepare the kit for painting. So what I tend to do is uh, take it all apart and group it into different colour groups as you can see here. 
And then what I'm going to do is, is mount every single one of these parts on a skewer with a crocodile clip attached to the end. Um, these are particularly handy because you can stick them into styrofoam and keep them upright. And uh, you'll see that in the next stage here. So the primers I'm going to use are all from uh, UMP, that's Ultimate Modeling Products. Uh, and I'm using grey, white and black uh, for different shades. Uh, this is an acrylic primer, uh, dries very smooth, um, but there are of course many different primers available and uh, I could do a whole video on just primers alone, so I highly recommend you do your own research, uh, do a bit of experimentation and find what's best for you. So the first parts I'm going to prime are the yellow parts and I'm going to prime them in white and I'm spraying here at around 25 psi just with a nice, even, smooth coat. So the colours that I've chosen to use are Mr. Colour Off-White, uh, Mr. Colour Standard White, Mr. Colour Black, uh, some Neutral Grey, uh, just some Standard Red, and some Lemon Yellow. And I'm going to mix up uh, some different shades just to add a bit of variation. So here I've mixed up a nice mustard yellow uh, just with a tiny bit of red uh, put into the lemon yellow. And also mixed up a dark grey and a kind of more purpley grey. So the first stage of painting is to add a base coat. Uh, this base coat is just normal white. And what I'm doing here is thinning it down to the consistency of, say, skimmed milk. And then I'm going to spray the part at around 25 psi. Nice even coat, doesn't have to be super thick, just enough to uh, give it a nice cover of colour. And I'm going to do the darker coats in a coat of black in exactly the same way. Next, for the white parts, I need to do some pre-shading. So I'm going to get some hull red and I'm going to very carefully just go over the edges where I would expect a bit of shadow to appear. And I'm going to do this along every single mustard yellow piece. Once that's fully dried, uh, I get my mustard yellow. And then I go over the piece, uh, concentrating on the white parts first to make sure that I get a nice bright colour in the centre and then kind of gently going over the rest uh, blending in the whole red to the rest of the piece. Then it's on to pre-shading the white parts with some neutral grey. Then just like before we highlight that just in some white. For the purplish grey parts I'm going to do a post shade uh, which basically means you do things in reverse. So you do uh, the entire part in the darker colour first and then you use the highlight colour to create the blend. For the metallic parts, especially uh, around the pistons, uh, I'm going to use L-clad lacquers. Um, these are very nice metallic paints that can be sprayed at quite a low PSI. I tend to do it around sort of 15 PSI. And I'm just going to give it a very light coat until I'm happy with the overall coverage. And now for the darker grey parts, again I'm going to post shade these. Uh, remember that you need to thin all of these paints, uh, you don't need to thin the L clad because they come already thinned. And finally just the neutral grey parts, again post shaded. Now with the bulk of the painting done, the next thing we need to do is to paint in a few details here and there. Uh, like here behind the visor of the head, um, so I'm painting this silver, so that when we put the translucent visor over the top, uh, it looks nice and shiny underneath. Uh, there's many parts on this kit that kind of just need highlights here and there, just to add a little bit of detail. This is easily done just with some normal silver acrylic paint. Uh, I'm using Vallejo Model Air here. Um, just slapping it straight on. No need to thin it. Uh, because it's such tiny quantities, you don't need to worry too much about there being any brush marks. So 
So once you've painted in all the details that you want to paint in, the next thing to do is to seal the whole thing in. What I use is uh, a product called Alclad Aqua Gloss. Uh, this is like uh, an acrylic clear coat. Um, uh, I've used it for many years. It's very, very good. Uh, it's very hard wearing and seals in your paint job nicely. So the next stage is to reassemble the kit into more manageable parts like arms and torso and legs. And what we're going to do next is some panel lining. To do this all I'm doing is uh, getting some thin down enamel and uh, gently just placing it on the edge of each panel line so the paint actually gets sucked into the line uh, you can see here in the video. What's important to bear in mind here is that you've got to make sure that you have a very glossy surface before you do this. Um, if you don't have a glossy surface then the paint will just simply blot into your paint job and then it will be impossible to remove. Uh, plus if you don't do a good gloss surface then when you try to tidy it up later on uh, by using some thinner you will basically take away your paint job. So another good way to add lots of detail to especially dark parts uh, is to do some dry brushing. Uh, and this is a really simple process where you just uh, get some paint on a nice old rough brush, uh, take as much of the excess off as you possibly can, and then just gently brush over the part so that tiny amounts of paint get brushed onto all of the raised surfaces. And you can see how effective this looks on these weapons. So once you're completely happy with your paint work and you've done all your panel lining and detailing, uh, the next thing to do is to seal it all in, uh, again using some aqua gloss or whatever top coat you'd like to use, um, in preparation for the next stage which is adding some decals. So adding decals to your kit is actually quite straightforward. All you need is a small tray of water. And it's a good idea to get hold of uh, this special liquid called Microset and Microsol. Microset is used to help decals uh, adhere to the surface and Microsol is to help the decal melt into position. So uh, these, are, these are a great combination and um, I highly recommend that you get hold of some of these for your decaling. So once you've cut out your decal uh, as close to the edge as possible, uh, you want to soak it in the water for roughly 5 seconds. It's a good idea to just eyeball it, uh, just to see if the water is absorbed into the backing paper. Then you take it out of the water and then uh, you put it on some, uh, some kitchen towel, uh, just to blot out any excess water. And then on the surface where the decal is going to go, uh, you just put down a little bit of micro set. And then you get your decal, uh, slide it into position and then you're going to roll over it with a cotton bud just to get rid of any excess water. And once that's done you're going to leave that for roughly 10 minutes um, just to make sure that the set fully sets. Once you've left it all to dry then you go get your micro sole and then you just apply it quite liberally over the top of the decals and just let it slowly melt the decals into position. Once all that's completed then it's just a matter of giving it another top coat just to uh, seal in all of those decals and to make sure that they remain nice and strong and then it's time to move on to the weathering stage. Now weathering itself can actually be very very complicated so what we're going to do for this model it's just some very basic sort of uh, on the surface weathering um, just to give it the appearance of a little bit of wear and tear uh, so not necessarily weathered as such but more sort of uh, used so what we're going to use here is just a couple of acrylic colours uh, one from MIG uh, which is like a chipping rusty dirty colour and uh, the standard model air silver uh, which is actually my favourite uh, paint to uh, add any dry brushing to and the first thing I'm doing here is uh, getting some makeup sponge. Um, I'm using this in particular because it's very fine grained. And because this is a uh, 1 1 scale kit, uh, I want to make sure that the sponge is not too rough uh, just to maintain the kind of look of the scale of the weathering. 
all I'm going to do is tear off a tiny piece. Um, I'm going to do this quite randomly and keep changing it so that the pattern changes. And I'm going to dip it into the paint, uh, it's completely unthinned. And I'm just going to very slowly go along some edges, uh, quite randomly, of the uh, armour pieces. Just to give it the appearance of a little bit of uh, wear and tear. Then after that I get a brush, just add a little bit more finer detail to that weathering. Again, you don't want to go too crazy, but it depends on uh, the kind of results that you're after. Because this is a, just a, a bit of light wear and tear, uh, I'm just going to go kind of very sparsely over some edges where you would expect there to be the most wear and tear, and just kind of bold out those weathered edges. After that I get the silver paint where I would expect the wear and tear has actually got through to bare metal, uh, so again very 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 sparingly. Uh, just on some edges, just add a dab of silver paint. Then after that I do some very very light silver dry brushing over the whole model just to give it a kind of metallic brushed sheen. So it looks like the paint is just beginning to wear away, um, just at its very first stages of uh, wearing off. And I do this particularly more in the joint areas, uh, especially where there's kind of inner frame showing and on the shoulders and just this just brings out just a little bit more detail in the model kit. If you like you can add a little bit more uh, wear and tear to it by getting a cocktail stick and uh, making a few holes and divots and scratches uh, in the decals but of course uh, be very cautious that you don't end up removing your paintwork. Uh, just be very light, perhaps make a little divot and then rub over the top of it until the decal starts to wear back a little. And here is the completed and lightly weathered model. Uh, now if you'd like you can seal this all in again uh, with an aqua gloss or you could go ahead and use a top coat that gives it a nice matte finish. Uh, but personally I like to see all the real textures and uh, all the different kind of surfaces on there. So what I tend to do is not do any top coat at all. This isn't the best idea if you are going to pose the kit quite a lot. Uh, but if it's just going to sit on a shelf in a nice protected area, uh, probably in a cabinet or something, um, you're pretty much okay just to leave it as is. But just bear in mind that that weathering uh, layer that you've put on may come off on your fingers. So there we have the completed uh, gun cannon. Um, I must say that I really, really enjoyed actually building this kit. Um, it's so much fun. I mean, I normally do master grades, so this was... Uh, it was nice to just do uh, a nice simple small uh, high grade project. I'm um, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I have uh, got to take some nicer pictures of this um, and what I normally do is I set up um, like a photo booth behind me and uh, take some nice pictures and uh, make sure the lighting's all nice and the colour balance is correct um, and, and I'll probably post that on my website at one point uh, when I get around to it. But um, I just want to thank you all for watching, I uh, hope this was uh, useful for you uh, in some way. Um, again, if you've got any questions or any queries then uh, do ask below, or you can visit me on, on my Facebook page, uh, that's uh, facebook forward slash Gundam UK. I would like to just add that if you're in the UK or Europe and you're after any kind of uh, aftermarket parts, uh, such as decals or plastic parts that you want to detail up your kits with, uh, or if you are in need of any specific tools, uh, then do head to my website at gundamuk.com uh, where I have a, an ever-increasing array of items that you can buy. If there's any specific parts that you're after and you can't get hold of, then do give me a shout. Uh, you can always send me a message on Facebook or you can use the contact form on my website. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time uh, when I'll probably be starting a new work in progress series. Most likely going to be this, oh blimey, which is um which is a Delta uh, Delta Plus. Um never built one of these before, so that should be fun. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.